Welcome back to our workshop. I've written a blog post on our website about the different skill levels required in the furniture repair industry. They fall into four categories. There's upholstery repair, finishing repair, woodworking repair, and then how to repair damaged wood. I'm going to show you some of the more difficult aspects of how to repair damaged wood using woodworking techniques. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. What I need to do is take that apart, repair it, and put it back together so I can get this chair in working order. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. My background before getting into furniture repairs is custom woodworking, where I would design and build custom pieces for customers. You can see an example here of a bed that I built. It's got a front veranda, Victorian style. It was really a hit with the customer. I'm going to share with you some woodworking techniques so you can understand how to repair wood. Now these are more advanced techniques. You do need to understand woodworking and have woodworking tools and experience to be able to pull this off. So if you're not quite there yet, this is something you can learn, maybe file in the back of your brain of something you might want to do in the future. The first example I've got for you is a project I've already filmed. I'm going to show you the introduction and how I patch this piece of wood. The top crest rail is broken off on this chair. It's broken off of the joint, but there's a huge piece that's missing at the back here. The approach that I use to patch in a new piece of wood is to use a miter saw or a table saw to patch in that new piece of wood. There's two reasons for that. One is I want a flat surface so that I get a good glue bond. If there's a variation in that surface, the glue isn't going to adhere as well. And secondly, if I do cut that surface with a plane or a chisel and there's some slight variation in it, I'm also going to see the seam. So a machine surface is best to disguise the repair and make sure it's really strong. So it's an awkward cut, but the reason I like it is because I now have a nice machine surface. Let me show that to you up close. You can see that's a there in the light. A perfectly flat surface that I can now laminate a piece of walnut on top of that. Now I need to grab some walnut pieces. Uh, I'll grab a few of them. There's different colors of walnut. So I want to make sure I get one that's as close as possible to the chair. Uh, here's a couple more. Well there you can see the difference between those two. When you're patching in pieces like this, you want to make sure you're using a similar color and also a similar grain pattern. So I'm going to go through these and find one that matches. I'm going to save that for a future video on our channel. So I'm going to switch gears to an easier example, something where I can show you how to do the shaping and the joinery to repair a broken piece of wood. This is a bench that had a problem when it was built. It broke off, so I've laminated some maple to it. It was designed in a way where the joinery was very weak. These mortises were just pulled apart because they had cut a piece in here and they were too short at the top. The first step is to cut the leg to length and I use a hole down to make sure this is a safe cut on the miter saw. Next I need to knock off the corners so I have two flat sides. When working on finished pieces, I like to use masking tape to protect the surface. I need to use the surface as a reference point for my plane, so I don't want to be scratching it up as I'm doing this work. Learning how to use a hand plane does take some practice. It's about building muscle memory and getting comfortable with the tool. The key to success is making sure that you've got a sharp blade. I'm planing this down almost to the surface, but not quite there yet. What I'm doing is making sure I've got a reference surface so I can run this through the table saw. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. With most of the waste removed with the table saw, I'm now going to use the hand plane again. The technique I'm using here is just to use the toe, the front of the hand plane, as a reference point to level out as much as I can. 
I don't want to get it right down to the surface. I'll use a card scraper for that to make sure I get the surfaces exactly matched. And here you can see the thickness of the shaving I've got coming off. It's pretty thick. The next step is to move on to a cabinet scraper, also known as a card scraper. And it's just a flat piece of steel that's got a hook on it. If you haven't used one of these before, they're really a fascinating tool. Inexpensive, but very effective. It does a superior job to leveling things out compared to sandpaper. The next step is to cut out the mortises, and the previous ones were cut far too close to the top edge. The easiest way to cut out mortises is with a drill press. Setting the fence to the right distance and then setting the depth stop on the drill press will make this a pretty quick operation. The other option is to use a router to do this, but I find it takes a lot more setup work. So this is my go-to solution. After I clean out most of the waste with the drill press, then it's time to move on to using a chisel to clean it out. Now using chisels like this, you want to make sure that they're sharp. Honing your blades so they're razor sharp makes this easier and much more enjoyable. It also gives you a higher quality finish. I use this drop to keep my chisel sharp. On this side I've got honing compound, on this side it's just bare leather. And I use this about every other time I use a chisel. On the strop, you need to make sure you've got the right angle in the chisel. And once you get used to this, you can actually feel it. So I just put it down the surface here, feel where that angle is, and then pull it back. I do this 30 times. And then I'll do it once on the back, just to clear off any potential burr. And then flip it over on this side and do the exact same thing. Feel for that angle. And then move it across 30 times. And then at the very end, just run the back on it. Now, let's see if I can catch the reflection. That is a mirror finish. You can see how sharp my chisels are as I lay them on the line here before chopping the mortise. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. Now back to fixing furniture. To fix this bench, I need to take it apart. There are a couple pieces here that need to get modified as I put this back together again. The bottom of the bench was cut into the leg, and that's weakening the leg. I'll notch out the bottom of the panel to go around the leg, and that way I've got the optimal strength in this repair. With this bench apart, I can now modify the tenon. You can see how close it was to the top edge of this wood. That really was a weak point in this joinery. I use a mix of western saws and Japanese hand saws in my work. This is a dovetail saw, and it's got a very rigid blade, great for making straight accurate cuts when I'm doing joinery. My favorite hand saw is my Gyokujo flush cut saw. It's great for trimming things flush, and that's what it's designed for. It's a quality that doesn't leave scratches when you're working on a finished surface. And it's very, very sharp. It works very quickly. I'll leave a link in the video description of some of the tools I've shown you here. The last step to trimming this tenon is rounding the curve. And you can see how easy it is with a very sharp chisel. It takes just a light amount of weight to push down and cut these pieces of wood. I'm now ready to test out the tenon in the mortise to see how well this fits. 
Now the joint surfaces that you're looking for, you want them to be tight. You don't want them to be tight enough they're going to split on the mortise, but tight enough that they're going to hold together on their own. You can see here how well this piece has come together. It's all ready for the glue up. There are two books that have helped me learn these skills over the years. The first one is Hand Tools for Woodworkers. It's got some good insights into how traditional tools work and how to sharpen them. The other one is Cabinet Making. This is an older book, but it's one I've used over the decades to look at the details of how things are built and learn proper joinery techniques. I'll leave a link to these books in the video description. I hope you've enjoyed learning some of these woodworking techniques so you can understand how to repair damaged wood. There are some cases where it's not possible to patch things in. Here's a stretcher for a chair that was chewed by a dog and this needs to be turned on a lathe. You'll see that in an upcoming project. If you're curious about the chair I started to show you, here's another clip where you can see I've got some patches successfully in and I need to shape those. That's a challenge you'll see on our channel in the future. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, you can click over here, click on the bell icon, and you'll get notified every time we publish a video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. I love to hear the feedback from you. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture. <music>